Lord Jesus, I just thank you for this opportunity to share your gospel and to share the talent that God has given me to help people, to show them who you are and how real you are. I thank you, Father, for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, amen. So God has shown me uh, a new vision that he wants me to express to you. And what it is was hands. Um, I was driving home um, and, you know, God reveals things into me in the clouds. And when I was driving, I saw nothing but hands in the clouds, just hands over hands over hands. And this is God's way of showing me that he wants me to draw some hands and to, and to explain the importance of laying on the hands and how much hands are a huge part of the Bible. So I just want to uh, draw some hands and show you the kinds of hands that he showed me in the clouds and, and express myself through scripture and through my art. Do not neglect your gift, which is given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. There's such an importance of laying on the hands because when we lay hands on each other, it's physical contact. It's a physical connection through the flesh, through our spirit to the flesh. And I know that there's been many times when I pray over people and I could feel the spirit touch my hand or touch a fingernail and the sensation of the Holy Spirit. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Uh, I guess this could segue into how I learned to speak in tongues. Um, when I learned to speak in tongues, it wasn't through any kind of deliverance or any kind of baptism. I just sat down and asked the Holy Spirit, I want to speak in tongues. And I sat down in the quiet space and I waited for the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit kindly said, okay, I want you to say this. And I want you to say this. I want you to say this. I want you to say this. And I did. And I slowly started to speak in tongues. And I uh, have been doing it ever since. And so I speak in the Spirit. I pray in the Spirit. And it's an amazing experience because my Spirit takes over and I'm speaking directly to God. Do not be hasty in the laying on of hands. And do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Now this is kind of a tricky passage when you look at it because, you know, when you look at it, the natural is saying, okay, be careful of who you lay your hands on, you know, and don't share in their sins, but keep yourself pure. So it's saying, you know, when you look at it the first time, am I doing the right thing by laying on the hands? But we as God... God-fearing Christians know that God is protecting us. So whoever we lay our hands on, we will deliver them from whenever evil comes because we are pure in our spirit and we're pure in our walk with God. So nothing can hurt us. So I went into the study Bible and I went and looked and what it says was there was a ceremony that affirmed a man's suitability for an acceptance into public ministry as an elder, pastor, or overseer. This came from the Old Testament practice of laying hands on a sacrificial animal to identify with. Uh, hastily refers to the proceeding with the ceremony without a thorough investigation and preparation period to be certain of the man's qualifications. So that's what it, it means in, when you look at it from a scholar, scholarly um, uh, viewpoint. Um, this is from Mark uh, 10, 13 through 16. Then they brought little children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. 
But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. So when I look at this scripture, I think about, you know, we need to humble ourselves like a little child and look in a childlike wonder at the kingdom because that is the beauty of what the kingdom is. and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you. Now this uh, scripture, you know, you can really take it to heart. I take it to heart because I like to lead a quiet life. I like to lead a life of peace, a life of humbleness, and in my home and in my family. And and I work with my hands because I'm an artist and my hands are the crucial part of how to make art, how to do anything really. Our hands are the most important part of our body. It's a tool. We have five fingers on each hand and we, do, we use these hands to create, to build, to express ourselves and our hands are a gift. Um, the quiet life, it refers to one who does not present social problems or generate conflict among those people in his life, but whose soul rests easy, even in the midst of difficulty. Paul later deals with those who did not mind their own business. Work with hands is Greek culture looked down on manual labor, but Paul exalts it. At sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sickness, and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. Now we all know that Jesus is the great physician. He healed everyone, except for those in his hometown. But when it says sunset, it refers to the end of the Sabbath, so everybody was freely able to travel to see Jesus and, and to be healed. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now this is a crucial part in history because this is when it went from just the Jewish people being blessed by God to everyone being blessed by God. And it signified the apostolic affirmation and solidarity. That has actually occurred likely demonstrated that believers also spoke in tongues here, just as those who received the Holy Spirit did on the day of Pentecost. And that Jew, Gentile, half-breed Samaritans, and Old Testament saints became New Testament believers.
He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. This is not to suggest that his power was somehow diminished by their unbelief. It may suggest that because of their unbelief, people were not coming to him for healing or miracles the way they did in Capernaum and Jerusalem. Now, by my own testimony, I know that Jesus does heal because he healed my son. He healed my son of a, debil a debilitating OCD. And... I know that healing is for today and healing is for people who are seeking it. And it's not to say why some people get healed and some people don't. It's God's will. We're not to question it. But when he does heal, it's a testament to the will of the Father. Because when Jesus healed the blind man, Jesus asked the disciples, was it the man's sin or was it the father's sin and he said it was neither because it was to be glorifying God through the miracle of healing he pleaded earnestly with him my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him and he healed his daughter. And a great multitude of people just followed him and were, were, would not leave him alone. And they were just amazed at the miracles that he does. And he can do miracles in our lives. And he can do miracles in our homes, in our families' lives. And the power of the blood of Jesus is something that we should not take for granted and something that we should take for as a healing mechanism and a powerful mechanism to enlighten us and empower us and strengthen us. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass, while he blessed them, that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Then the people brought little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked them, and Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. Now, to me, this passage means that the children are too innocent to understand the corruption of the world. They're, they're too innocent and they're just learning and they're just moving and they're God's creation and they're, they're such a wonderful blessing. And Jesus rebuked his disciples saying, leave them alone because these are such in the kingdom of heaven. Now, in the year that I'm recording this, in the year 2023, there is a plan set out to corrupt these young children, to poison their minds, to poison the minds and in injecting them with ideology that tells them that they can be a different sex than what they've been given by God. And it is a trap by Satan that has set this up and we need to protect our children at all costs. Because the people that want to implement the structure of evil, these people do not have children of their own. And they think they know what's right. And they are 
so wrong for what they were doing, and they will be judged, and it will be just them and God. So, Lord, I just pray right now, Lord, for the children of the future, our future children, God, in the wombs, our future children, Lord, that you have thought about millions of years before this earth was even formed, God, that you put on this earth, that there will be, they will be born for such a time as these. I pray for these children, God. I pray that your innocence will be untouched, and I pray that your innocence will be strengthened in your word and in your spirit, God, and I pray that angels protect these young children, these young minds, God, that are still developing, God, and I pray that any corruptible evil that tries to get near them, Father, I pray that you will strike them down with your mighty, your the mighty shield, God, and of your angels, Father, and and protect our children, God, because our children are our future, Father, and they are innocent, God, and they are so so valuable to us, God, and you're so valuable to you, God. Their innocence, their beauty, God, just. F- Forgive those who are trying to hurt them, God, but if they are trying to hurt them with ill intentions, God, please come down and judge them accordingly, Lord. Separate the wheat from the chafe, Lord, and separate the goats from the sheep, Father. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. Stealing in any form is a sin and has no part in the life of a Christian. Rather, let him work, producing what is beneficial. The alternative to stealing is to provide for oneself, one's family, and others what is God-honoring through honest, honorable means. A Christian not only should harm no one, but should continually endeavor or to help those who are in need. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, He took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. Now we we as Christians have the upper hand as far as knowing that Jesus Christ is real. Because Pontius Pilate was under the authority of Caligula before Pontius Pilate killed himself. Pontius Pilate killed himself out of the guilt of crucifying Jesus, and Pontius Pilate was under the authority of Caligula, and Caligula was is a known, factual, historical figure. So you can connect the dots and learning and knowing who Pontius Pilate was in history. He was a real person, he crucified Jesus, Jesus is real, and Jesus was resurrected, and Jesus is now our Savior. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit had already been active in Paul's life, convicting him of sin, convincing him of the Lordship of Christ, transforming him and enjoying in him permanently. He was then filled with the Spirit and empowered for service. Saul received the Spirit without any apostles present because he was a Jew and because he was an apostle in his own right because Christ personally chose him and commissioned him for service. Now I wanted to give a little bit of a personal testimony in my own life of something similar to happen to me when I was working on something the Holy Spirit came down and half blinded me like Paul and it wasn't um, a, a, a blinding that was like everything was dark it was everything was like a white light and all I could see was a white light and it was like in one eye 
And what I was doing was I was working on a ho- like a hobby model. It was like something that the Lord wanted me to stop doing. And I kept doing it. And I was painting this model. And I was listening to a Kim Walker Smith song. And while I was listening to the song, it was so powerful that the Lord came down and had mercy on me and half blinded me. And I was like this for almost like an hour. And I had to sit there for an hour hoping that my vision would come back. I knew it would but it was just when it would come back. And the Lord just wanted to give me a taste, a small taste of what he did to Saul on the road to Damascus. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went in to see him and, after prayer, placed his hands on him and healed him. The gastric fever caused by a microbe found in goat's milk that was common in Malta, dysentery, often a result of poor sanitation, was widespread in the ancient world. For this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So as we end this latest prophetic art that I've just presented to you, I just want you to know that if you're hearing the sound of my voice at this very moment, that God loves you and he has a plan for your life, and you are special, and you have a special fingerprint, and you have a book written about you in heaven, and that you are important and you are made to prosper in the kingdom of heaven and prosper in evangelizing and proclaiming the gospel to the world. So in this last few minutes, I just want to pray and thank you for watching this. And I want to um, pray in my prayer language that the Holy Spirit has shown me. And if it, any of you who are listening to my voice right now do not have a prayer language. All you have to do is quiet yourself and turn everything off and tune into the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will guide you in your prayer language. Because what happened to me was I asked the Holy Spirit to help me speak in tongues, and the Holy Spirit says, Say this, now this, now this, now this. And before I knew it, I was speaking in tongues. So I just want to start speaking in tongues, my prayer language, and hopefully it will touch you in a way that the Holy Spirit has touched me. 
Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for my life. Thank you, God, for the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, God, for the grace of the Holy Spirit in my home and in my heart. Thank you, God, for surrounding me with your angels. Thank you, God, for surrounding me with your goodness. Thank you, God, for a platform where I can share my art and share your gospel, Lord, with the world, Lord, without any problems, Lord, because you protect me, Lord. I just thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, Father, for the blessings that you put before me. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this day. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for my life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for everyone listening. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your gift. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your protection. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for divine intervention. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for my life. Thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, God, for the gift of tongues. Thank you, God, for the gift of grace. Thank you, God, for the gift of healing. Thank you, God, for the supernatural. Thank you, Father, for this day and your mercies and in your love for me. I pray for those listening, Lord, that you touch their lives. I pray, Lord, that those who are listening right now to my voice, that you come down and make yourself real to them. Holy Spirit, touch them in a way that they've never felt before. Holy Spirit, thank you for this day. Holy Spirit, thank you for my art. The Holy Spirit, thank you for the gifts that you've given me. In Jesus' name, amen.